So I'm, uh, I'm Pierre Antoine, I'm the CEO of uh, Ingenico ePayments and I'm also leading the retail business of, uh, of Ingenico. And uh, you will see uh, Summit, uh, who is uh, head of sales, and Gertian, who is in charge of innovation um, in, the, in the company. So we want to talk to you about uh, how payment uh, is critical in the way it is managed to boost conversion. Uh, and how innovation can help uh, boost conversion during the payment, uh, the payment process. So, we are at Ingenico, so maybe you don't know us in, uh, in e-payment that much. Maybe you knew the former brands of Ingenico in e-payments that were Ogon and, uh, and Global Collect. So, which were two acquisitions that we made in the years 2013 and 2014. And we worked quite a lot on the technology that we have on the product so that we could leverage on the, on the foundations that we acquired, especially the ones of, uh, of Global Collect, and put it at the, at the best level to serve the growing companies of the internet, um, uh, especially in the new uh, next generation of commerce. So we are putting a lot of focus on three subjects, which are accepting payments worldwide. So more and more of you uh, are directly touching consumers on a global basis. So would it be the marketplaces model? Would it be uh, in, uh, in travel? Would it be in consumer goods? And we know that very quickly, after your first years of development, you need to have international solutions. You need to have global solutions. You need to have local payment methods to address the usage, to address the habits of the consumers in their specific uh, geographies. And so, based on um, the acquisition of uh, Global Collect, we, we, we can make available something like 150 payment methods on a global basis. We can take care of very complex subjects like uh, Forex, multi-currency, so offered to the consumers to pay in their local currency, and you as a merchant be paid, be settled in your local currency which is something that does increase significantly the, 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 uh, the conversion. The second thing on which we've been working quite a lot is the user experience. So user experience of you and your development teams when you are setting up, when you are integrating into Ingenico, and user experience of your consumer with a key focus, key priority put on mobile. We all know that commerce E-commerce is massively a mobile commerce subject, and so we did invest quite extensively on a new API, on a hosted payment page on mobile that provide to your consumers the best, the best experience in terms of payment experience, and uh, Gertian will, will give you a lot of details on that. And so with the same integration, you will have access to payment page, on a standard device, in-app payment page, and potentially uh, social commerce uh, experience. The third thing which is very important for us, on which we've been putting a lot, a lot of focus, massive focus, is the data. So we, we make available to our merchants the data that allow them to track what makes a payment performing or not. So from the very first contact between the consumer and your payment solution, so which is the payment page, up to what makes um, a transaction authorized or not from a pure financing point of view, pure financial point of view, we are able to track that transactions during the journey and make you understand what makes it a success and what makes it fail. And obviously, based on that, our advice will help you to increase the conversion, and we all know the value of maximizing the conversion. So we, all our product strategy, all our professional services have one word from the very early hours in the morning to the evening, which is, how can I maximize the conversion of the merchant? Okay, and all the setup we have within the company has this goal, which is maximizing your conversion, maximizing your success during the payment channel. 
At Ingenico, we can work with any size of company. Okay, so we work with the very large OTAs like Booking, but we, we want to work also more and more with the startups, with scale-ups in particular, because we do consider that this is where the value is coming, and this is where the growth is coming for, from, uh, for, for e-commerce. So we, we have set up a certain number of partnerships uh, with um, sponsors, uh, with incubators, with Google, for instance, so that we, you, you as, a, as a community get better knowledge of, uh, of Ingenico. And it's the same in terms of product. We are setting up more and more partnerships with uh, startups who are bringing to us additional technology that we do not want to develop. So I will give you a very simple example. We, we, we are very strong now in integrating payment in the messengers. And we've done that with a startup based in San Francisco, uh, joined up, which has brought to us the messenger bots technology, and we have combined that with our payment technology. So that's something that we are pushing, and obviously, if, um, uh, if you have some interest in integrating payment with your technical solution, that's something that we can discuss, and, uh, and Gertian is here for that. So today we will focus on, on conversion, because this is our motto conversion today and conversion tomorrow because we are pretty much convinced that innovation brings a lot of value in terms of enhancing conversion going, going forward. So, uh, Summit, uh, we'll, uh, we'll con no, that's you, Gertian, yeah, who is uh, taking the, the lead now. Yes, thank you, Pierre-Antoine. So, indeed, let's, let's start by looking at, uh, at conversion today. Um, and if you think about conversion, it's for us, it's, as we see it, it's all about moments of truth, about being there at the right moment for your customer and making that customer convert. Obviously, we didn't invent moments of truth. Um, it, it started with Procter & Gamble already a while back, and who looked at moments of truth in an offline setting um, as, as the two critical steps for a consumer. First, the moment where you take out a product on the shelf you see the product and you make a decision, I want to buy this. And then obviously the second moment of truth where you take home the product, you open it and you use it. And this is where loyalty uh, comes in. This is obviously more about uh, brand awareness recognition. Um, however, this was built for the offline world. So in 2011, Google um, added one before, added the zero moment of truth, which means um, the moment where you start to search for a product, where you discover a product, maybe you do a mobile search, maybe you see an advertisement, maybe you look on a, on a local search, anything that lets you discover products, and that really drives in-store or online purchase. However, we at Ingenico believe there is one more, which, is, which we call the payment moment of truth. And why do, we, why do we put so much focus on that, and why is this so crucial to conversion? Is it's, it's because it's the very last step between uh, a customer who's interested in something and somebody who actually made a sale, made a purchase, and um, brought money for you as a merchant. It's the last point where a consumer can say, hmm, maybe I'll not buy it anyway. And in-store it's difficult because you're there with your shopping cart and you don't want to leave the queue. Online it's just like close the window. So that payment moment of truth, especially online, is really quite important, especially if you look at statistics. If you look at data, that's a study we've done, is if you look at 100 orders started, so people who put stuff in a shopping basket, only 50% of them go to a payment request, so actual to a payment transaction, and even there, again, 20% of orders are not completed. Customers abandoning during the payment process, customers uh, not having a the right uh, amount on their bank account, all different reasons. But so it's in total, it's from the people who have a shopping cart and click checkout, there is approximately 60% still lost there because of all different reasons on the consumer side, all lost in that crucial payment moment of truth. And that's for us why, like Pierre Antoine said, conversion is, is so key to, to what we do. So I said, why do consumers abandon? Obviously, things like uh, not having the right payment options, 
too many steps in a payment process, which is where user experience comes in, but as well just security. Do I still, in this day and age, do I still feel secure? Um, I did a study we've done with Oxford Economics. We see that actually 70% of people who shop online worry about having their personal information stolen. People who think, more than half of people think that mobile is less secure than a physical wallet. Even today, 2017, people still trust their, mo their physical wallet more. Um, and they would likely buy more if fraud losses would be covered and would be handled. So that's why, obviously, there is a lot of focus on fraud. And you'll hear uh, Ludovic talk about that later today. Um, but so, what can you do about that? How can you make your payment moment of truth better, more converting? And for that, I'd like to ask uh, Sumit, who is our, our expert on that, to just share some expertise and especially some client stories. Thank you, Kejan. So, I think I got a, I got a very tough thing to present because, uh, well, maybe before that, I feel very happy but also sad at the same time. Happy because, uh, more happy than sad. Happy because one that uh, Noah gave us such a great audience, high powered people, right? I, I see around companies which are really growing fast and will take up the world tomorrow. So amongst our audience, we have Finia from uh, Imodo. So they're building an e-charging marketplace. And I think, personally think, uh, we had a chat this morning, and I personally think that this is one company which will go uh, which will go to future places and grow, really grow globally. So that is one I'm really happy to meet such people around. I'm also happy to talk about our core competency, as Pierre Antoine said, it's conversion. But I'm sad because the time frame which we got, because conversion is such a vast topic, there are thousand parameters or elements which affect conversions on the websites and how companies grow. But I have limited time, so I chose, carefully chose four elements, which I'm going to talk about to present you how you can optimize conversions on your website as of today. So I met Google CEO a few years back. Uh, he and I come from the same country. So when I happened to meet him through a common friend, I asked him, what is the success? What is the real, how, how did Google succeed? And he told me as a company, they trust in God, but everybody else brings data to the table. <laughs> so. So I think uh, also in the startup world, I think the way you guys reach out to your venture capitalists, etc., all these VC companies are also looking for really strong data. How are you using your data to optimize your, your growth in the market? But also if you are into payments, monetizing uh, your traffic on the website, how do you use the data there to actually grow further? So at Ingenico, when we talk about conversion, which is part of our DNA, Data is the most important thing. And what we have done, at least, I mean, I think about five years back, we started a project uh, of business intelligence, gathering some of the really large companies which are our part of our portfolio, companies like KLM, uh, one of the flagship uh, airlines across the globe, but also Rosetta Stone, a big educational platform, but also companies like uh, trip, uh, uh, Make My Trip, which is a big OTA from India. So we gathered about 15 companies. We started a project with them to go above and beyond payments, right? Because payments is something which is very commoditized. You, you hook onto an acquiring bank through a channel and the payments start coming in. But we wanted to go above and beyond. So we started a project with them that what can we do to go beyond payments? And this is one of the things which came out. And we invested about 13 million odd euros in this project. Uh, we call it Elevate. It's a tool which we use where we can offer this to our merchants where they can actually benchmark data or conversions, how they are going on their websites. We, we launched this about three years back, so we institutionalized the product already, so many of our merchants are using it and benefiting from it. But then we took it to the next level. We took it to the AI, we took it to the predictive modeling. So you are, you are now able to, for example, see from the tool that if you're gonna implement X, Y, Z on your websites, how your conversion is gonna be uh, looking like in next three months or four months. So that's something which you can do. Uh, and I think if you don't do it already, talk to your payment providers and ask for this kind of a tool as well. Uh, so that's the first one, the most important one. The next point is, is more about maximizing the value of, of, your, of your partners. The way we see, since I said, as I said, the industry has been really commoditized. We see generally that the, the, 
the relationship which has developed between large merchants and the payment service providers has come to a mere client-vendor relationship. And we feel that this thing should be challenged. Your payment service provider should be more or less like a partner so that they are able to grow with you. So any, because this industry is like where if you are able to make 100 euro as an extra uh, revenue, the payment partnership would also ben the payment partner would also benefit along with it. So there has to be a really good value proposition tying between yourself and your and your partner. I'm going to take some pragmatic examples. We work with Liverpool Football Club, and uh, when we reached out to them, they were well. They are a big uh, football club, and they have fan following across the globe. And they were, what they were doing is basically they were working with a PSP, which was actually more like, as I said, the, a, a vendor-client uh, relationship. And when we got into, uh, we, we started to talk to them, we saw so many things which were actually killing conversions. The football club comes from UK. So they used GBP as a currency to trade globally. So any fan, let's say if he's coming from Thailand or from Norway or from Sweden or from India, wherever in the world, if they want to buy something from their favorite club, they would be actually paying in, in British pounds. We challenged this perspective as well. And then Liverpool challenged us back. So, uh, but in the end, we tried to convince them and we were successful to actually multiply or globalize with multiple currencies. And that's the first step. So reach out to your partners or your vendors, as you may have the relationship right and ask for having how you can really work as a partner, whether the whether PSP can actually help you or tell you the pitfalls which you have on your websites and grow it further. So currency is one of them. But also the next step to the currency is, is payment method. So for example, if you want to expand, let's say, uh, the, the city where I live, Amsterdam, part of Netherlands, if you want to have your business really grow in that country and you only have credit cards on your website, I can already tell you that it's going to be very, very hard because that particular country, Netherlands, has about 80% of, their, of, their, of, the, of the payments which happen in the country come from a specific product called Ideal, which is a local banking product. And until you have Ideal on your websites, it's not going to help, right? But to have Ideal, you need to have a euro currency on your website. So it ties from the currency first, comes to the payment method, and lastly, it is the language. So when you have to internationalize, as I said, it's, it's, it's currency first, then the payment method, then the language. Because why some, pe well, some people do it opposite way. They first internationalize with the language. However, in the, in, the, in, the, in the real world these days, there are multiple tools which are available on the browser itself, which can help to convert the website in the local language where people can see it. And this was the case with Liverpool Football Club, because if somebody wants to buy it from their favorite club, they want to go to that website, and they will convert it anyway through Google Translate in their local language. But again, when they come to the payment, mo the moment of truth, which is related to payment, if they don't find their own currency or the payment method, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna drop off. So this is becoming very important to, to maximize the value by talking to your financial partners or your PSPs. The third one, which is also very important, equally important as the first two points, focusing on the mobile part. So, a lot of startups, when they build their websites, they start from the concept, they build the website, and they start mostly with the freemium model, most of them, 90%. I'm using a generic uh, example. However, what they forget in this, when they build a great idea, and they build it on a freemium model to, to tie up the payments later, they, they, they do optimize their uh, uh, websites or uh, their, their channel on which they, they, they interact with the consumers. They completely optimize, optimize it for the mobile, but they forget the payments because it's generally added later. So we also see sometimes that the way the checkout will work on the websites will be completely optimized for the mobile, but the moment somebody clicks a payment button, the whole experience goes for a crash. So this is very important. The PSP or the partner which you would select needs to have the right elements into their DNA that they are also mobile first like your business. And there should be a, there should be a clear handshake between your websites, the look and feel which you have, and the payment pages of the partner itself. And they should just look like yours. And the URL should be same, et cetera, et cetera. So as I said, there is, it's a very complex topic, but I have a few moments to present, so I'm going to keep it high level. 
And if you guys have any questions, of course, uh, we all three, but some of my other colleagues are also here as well. Uh, the last and also important part, especially if you are in high transaction value business. So if you are having, if you are a travel agency, or if you are a health company, or you are into retailing with high ticket value, this becomes very important. This is about, this directly ties back to the conversion. It is about having the right fraud system in place, which will allow all the good transactions to go through and stop the fraudulent ones. And I really wish the world was like that, as ideal as I say it. However, majority of the fraud systems also sometimes block good transactions while they're tr trying to stop the fraud as well. So the optimization or the conversion optimization which comes into play for this segment is about minimizing the false positives. That's the industry word. If I will literally translate into, into, into general, is it, it means stopping good consumers as fraudulent. So what we did in this part is that uh, we, are, we are using partners which are specialized in doing this. A company like Frogster, which is our partner now, and I think uh, uh, if, I have to, uh, if I have to present this, I think I will leave it down to Frogster itself. And uh, we are actually on the main stage at uh, 15.05 today, uh, where Frogster will be presenting how to stop fraud, but also using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and then how to have the minimum false positives. So I will really recommend uh, to go to that uh, uh, session at the main stage, where Max from Proxer and uh, one of my colleagues, Ludovic, will be presenting, co-presenting -co about this uh, segment. So just to sum up, there are, these are the four elements which I talked about. Data, AI, not only data, not only your data, I'm talking about market data, which, is, which should be completely anonymous, by the way. So that should be, that should be uh, very important for your conversions. Take the data to the next level by adding uh, predictive modeling. That's very important. Uh, get the maximum value from your partners. Work closely with them. And if you have to internationalize, there are three segments to it, as I said. It's, it's currency first, then the payment method, and then language. The third one is mobile optimization. And I, I will sum up, as I said, majority of, the, majority of the businesses build the websites first and then later tie up the payment. So, but you should also uh, have a lot of emphasis, emphasis on how you do the payment experience as well, because that is where you actually earn the money when somebody's paying you as a consumer. And last but not least, it's the fraudulent, uh, the blocking the right, uh, 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 the right fraudsters and letting the good uh, consumers go through. And for that, as I said, I think uh, the session at 15.05 at the main stage will be very, very helpful. So uh, just to finish and hand it back over to Kherchian, he's gonna talk about conversion, what we are working now today within, within our company and how merchants can benefit from it. Uh, maybe I will just point out to two of my colleagues who are here, which, who can be reached out if you have any other questions. Stefano is here, if you can raise your hand. And Roy Blocker is also here. Filippo is here as well. Filippo is also here, so just look around. Uh, if you guys have any questions on the conversion part, we three and some of my other colleagues are also here in this room who could help you. Over to Kertian. All right, thank you. So um, indeed, after, after the first part on conversion today, uh, which is indeed topics that hopefully should resonate and be on your mind already today. Uh, we wanted to show you as well a taste on what will happen in, in payments or in payments conversion uh, in the future um, and what we see from innovation trends that might actually benefit, uh, benefit you. Um, so if you look at innovation in payments, and I can fill a slide with six images, I can fill one with 60 and, and talk all day about it, we see so much different things happening. We see companies like Apple entering the payment space. We see obviously Alipay, uh, Alibaba innovating a lot. Uh, all different trends from a technology side, uh, from a new ways to pay, obviously Amazon doing a lot. So there's really a lot of stuff happening in payments uh, and it keeps on, on improving all the time. However, what is now something we believe you should look at? So where do you start to see the true value in this maze of complexity of payment innovation? Um, and we see today as well, there was, there was a presentation, the fintech sessions on startups. There were, I think, 15 fintech sessions, all different startups innovating in this space. So where do you 
uh, where do you need to look at according to us? Well, we actually have three beliefs that I want to go with you today. Three beliefs on the future of payments. So for the first one, we really believe that payments will be omnichannel. And we are already moving in that direction today, but it's really all about capturing a consumer and helping a consumer where they are in, in the different sales channels, be it online, be it mobile, uh, be it in-store, and all different ways in between. Could be a customer who's buying something online, picking it up in your store, maybe doing an upsell in your store. Can be someone who's in your store but doesn't have the right, but you don't have the right inventory, and you want to uh, sell it to him online and deliver online. So all of these different sort of convergence online, offline, is something we believe a lot in. And if you look at data, obviously it's something that, uh, that, that is confirmed. Yeah, so, for example, in the US, 45% of physical shops already involve mobile shopping. So what if we can actually do shopping on mobile and not just searching? Um, but it's not only these sort of standard use cases on Omnichannel, it's also more innovative things like placing kiosks in camping pitches, which is a project we've done uh, with Group Casino in France, where they actually put a physical kiosk that we developed with the startup Think and Go, a physical kiosk in a camping site. You order groceries at the kiosk and it gets delivered. Take a second one, which is a big trend in the last year, is we believe payments will become conversational. And you see things like Apple adding peer-to-peer -peer payments. Uh, and launching competition with the Venmos, the PayPals uh, of this world. You see also chatbots, uh, which is something I personally uh, have been looking at a lot. You see chatbots, uh, like for example, Kayak, that allows you to buy uh, plane tickets uh, or a hotel through a chatbot, or uh, shoes, you can buy shoes through a chat just in Facebook Messenger. So it's something we believe a lot in. Why? Um, because we see it as almost a next paradigm in retail in online retail. So where you had e-commerce, which was sort of the mirror of your offline store, yeah, you can just you show your products as well, you put them in a shopping basket, you check out. Uh, you had then the social media, who led more into a participative economy, where you can uh, share stuff, where you have the marketplaces, the peer-to-peer -peer interactions, which really mirror that trend. We believe that following the trend of messaging bots and conversational uh, interactions, there will be almost a trend of conversational commerce that, that allows you to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with your customer, online, digital, automatic, but one-to-one -one and actually selling products that are personalized, tailored to their needs. But, and then we come back to conversion, you need to do that right and you need to convert fully in that channel. You need to treat it like a separate sales channel. Um, and it's something we've been working on quite a lot. And this is, this is really something that we have from our innovation lab. That's, that's a key, key project of ours. Pierre Antoine mentioned already the collaboration uh, with the JoinDap startup there. Uh, but it's something we already have live today, actually, um, which is a full payment integration in a chatbot. So you can have a chatbot that sells products that actually ends with a payment page with a checkout at the end. So you don't need to leave Facebook Messenger. Uh, you don't need to go to somewhere else to conclude. It's all integrated using everything we have as payment technology on our web mobile or on website. We offer it in a chat. So we do the different currencies, the different alternative payment methods, etc. We do this in Facebook Messenger, but also in Line, Telegram, WeChat, all the different chat platforms. So it's really something we, we believe in for the future and which we hope as well to accommodate you as a merchant going down that trend. Um, if you want to see it in action, by the way, don't hesitate to, to pass by afterwards. Um, as a last one, and maybe a bit further out, we believe that payments at one point will become invisible. Not longer really core to the, to the process of a consumer. I mean, look at Amazon with the Just Walk Out Amazon Go Store, and where you take a product and you walk out. Look at Uber. When you take a taxi, you leave the taxi and somehow, somewhere, it gets built, but you don't need to cautiously do an action on that. Or a project we're doing in the parking space, where if you park your car, your car will know where you're parked, when you enter, when you leave, and it will automatically settle for your parking bill. So no longer you have to keep tickets, go to the machine, put coins in. Your car takes care of that. Automatic, seamless. And obviously that uses technologies like tokenization, etc. 
But the important thing for me here is the, the, the fact that it becomes really a payment that's invisible, that's smooth for the user, um, and it really brings a nice user experience on the commercial side. So to sum up three beliefs, uh, omnichannel is very key, is one that is already here today. Second one, conversational, where we believe the trend is still starting, but already re reaching results for merchants, and then invisible payments as more the long-term trend uh, for payments. Okay, so just to, to, uh, to conclude, uh, we are quite a few members of the teams uh, here, including uh, Ludovic, uh, who will speak in a few minutes in the, the main arena. 15.05, at, at 15.05. 15.05, yeah. okay, so a bit more than that. Uh, so Ludovic is the, has been leading the product. All what we've been doing over the last two years it's, uh, it's uh, Ludovic and his team, so do not hesitate to interact with, uh, with him, to interact with uh, any of us. I think you understand the drive of Ingenico in uh, e-payments, all about conversion, in any type of use cases. And we have, that's the final world, so we have set up a dedicated um, interaction for uh, scale-up companies so that we can provide you the best advice, the best professional services, besides what we do for the mainstream, the mainstream merchants. So do not hesitate to interact with us, and we, we are very excited to, to meet as many of you uh, as we can over the, last, uh, the, last, the next two days. Thanks a lot, and uh, have a great day. I think there is no room for questions during Thank this format. Thank you.